Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter six is line numbers. Okay, so write a program that asks the user for the name of a file. The program should display the contents of the file with each line preceded, preceded with a line followed by a colon. Sorry, preceded, preceded with a line number followed by a colon. The line number should start at one. Okay, so we are going to ask the user to enter the name of a file that should exi exist on our computer, right? With content in there, with basically lines in the file. And it should, the program should basically display all the contents or all the lines in the file numbered, you know, with, with, with line numbers, basically like this, it's kind of like this, right? So, that, so that, that's what we're going to do. But first of all, we need to basically have the file, okay, with a series or basically with content in there. Um, not numbered though, just content in there. And then our program is going to list the content or display the content to us numbered. And so let's do that. I'm going to open text edit on my computer on my Mac and then make make sure I set the preferences. On Mac, I uh, use text edit. On Windows, you can use notepad. I'm going to set the pre preferences for, for text edit. Make sure it's on plain text, right? I've done that already. But make sure yours is set to plain text. Plain text is going to make sure it's strictly text, but rich text is going to have extra formatting behind or basically extra formatting behind the scenes that you, you won't see, okay, behind your text. And so when you save your file and you have your text, it's going to basically displayed you know wrongly sometimes and so make sure it's saving in plain text format on windows like you said you can use um notepad notepad plus plus or basically any text editor you're comfortable with and so let's create this um um file with a bunch of items right let's just say first line second line another line line <laughs> Just random stuff. Let's just do that. Random stuff. Okay, and so we have these lines in this file. Let's call this. Let's save this file as random stuff.txt. And let's save it in a folder where we are going to save this particular program in. Right? And so let's go on the desktop where our where all our Python programs are. In this chapter six folder, I'm going to create another folder and call it line numbers and I'm going to create this or save this txt file in this line numbers folder that's what we're going to save so this is a ra random stuff the txt file I hope I did save it save it as a txt so I'm going to hide it for now and so as long as we save this particular program in that folder they should be able to see each other all I have to do is just type in the name of the file and they should be able to see each other but if, if I don't save the, f the text file where the program is I need to specify to the program where exactly the file is by typing the full path through you know, to where the file is the text file is all right so first of all let's define a main method because most programming languages the main method is where in most programming languages the main method is basically where your where your program is that's the that's the method that calls every other well, well, I'm talking about a function. The main let's let's create the main function. Let's define the main function. The main function in most programming languages is where your program is and where all other functions are basically called. And so it's good practice. It's a it's a good idea to create a main function and write our program there. And then when we are done, we call the main function, right? And so before we do that, let's define the main function this way. And then now let's write our program. Later on, we'll call our our, our main function. All right, so write a program that's going to ask the user for the name of a file, and so let's use the input function to do to do that to ask the user to enter name enter enter a name or the name of a file. And so the input function is going to take in an argument, which is basically what you want to display to the user. Right? I'm going to tell the user to please enter um, a name of a file. Have a colon and a space. Now the input function is going to display this text to the user and allow the user to type in something. Now whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string, right? In this case, we need a string because that's just going to be the name, of the name of the file name. And so when the user types in something, the input function will return whatever the user typed as a string. We need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable that's going to store what the user types, which is being returned, right? And so I'll, I'll save this, I'll create this, I'll call this variable user file name. And set it equal to whatever the input function is returning. So now we'll have the user file name here. 
Okay, so write a program that asks the user for the name of a file. We've done that. The program should display the content of the file with each line preceded with a line number followed by a colon. Okay, so first of all, let's open this file in read mode. We are going to read from the file, and so we want to open this file in read mode. And the way we do that is with the open function. The open function takes in a couple of arguments, the name of the file. Now, normally you type the name of the file this way, right? But we have the name of the file in the user file name from the user. And so we can use this variable because it will contain the file name. And the open function also takes in what mode are you opening this file in? We are opening this file in read mode. And so I'm going to surround the letter R, which stands for read mode or read with double quotations. You can also surround them with single quotations, but I'm, well, I like double quotations. I'm using double quotations. OK, so we're opening the file in read mode. And once we do this, this creates an object in memory, a file object in memory. And so let's create a variable that's going to represent or reference that file object, OK? Oops. And so that, var sorry, that variable I'm going to call um, file to read from. It's a long name, but I know, bear with me. You can change it to something shorter if, it, if you're not comfortable with this. But um, this is, yeah, I like long, long names. I'm sure most of you know by now. <laughs> so file to read from is going to be, a, be the variable to represent that file object that's created from or created in memory anytime we call the uh, open function. We are opening this file in read mode. It creates a file object in memory. We are using this variable to represent that file object. Basically, we are using this variable to represent the file. Okay, and it's really, it's named correctly too. I think file to read from is um, kind of logical. Okay, so now we have the file to read from. The program should display the content of the file with each line preceded with a um, line number, right? So let's first of all make sure that the file contains something, right? Anytime you call, well, first of all, let's let's read the very first line of the of the file. So this is the file we have. Let's let's read the very first line of the file. Make sure that is not empty, right? And so uh, first of all, let's let's do first first things first. Let's read the very first line of the file. So the way I do that is I refer to the file object, the file, so basically the variable that's referenced in the file, which is file to read from, right? The variable that's referenced in the basically the file object, right? So file to read from, and I can call, I can use the method dot read line, and file to read from dot read line will basically read the very first line of this file, right? And it's going to move the, the read position from the end of this line to the beginning of this line and wait for us to call read line again. So if we call read line again, it's now reading the second line. And it's going to move the position from the read position from the end of this line to the beginning of this line. And it's going to wait for us to call read line again. And when we call read line again, it's going to read the third line. You know, so basically, anytime you call read line, the read position, after reading that line, the read position adjusts to the next, the beginning of the next line and wait for you to call it again so that it can read that line. And then it, it goes to the beginning of the next line and waits for you to call read line again and so on and so forth. And so let's first of all call the read line, which is going to read this first line. And when it reads this first line, it's going to return it. And we need a place to store it, right? So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it line and store whatever is being returned from the file to read, basically from, from the read line you know, function. And so this will, this will store our first line. Let's check to see if that line is not empty. Because anytime you call the read line function and it returns an empty string, that means that there is nothing or there, there are no more lines in the file. If you call the read line function and it returns an empty string, that means that the, the, that file is empty. There are no more lines to read. And so we don't want that. We want to always make sure that the file contains something so, so that we can print it. If it doesn't contain anything, then let's stop the you know, let's stop re reading from it, right? So we're, we're going to use a loop, a while loop, to always, after reading a line, check to see if the content of that line is not empty. Because if it's empty, then that means we're done reading from the line. There, there are no more lines to read from. As long as there's a line to read from, keep on reading, and then we can print it, all right? OK, so let's do that. Let's first focus on reading reading from the file, right? And so I'm going to first of all, after reading the first line, I'm going to check to see while line. While line, okay, the first content of line is not, oh sorry, it's not 
exclamation sign is not equal to an empty string. If it's not equal to an empty string, if, if the content after reading this first line, this line here, if it's not an empty string, then that means it contains something, right? And so if it contains something, then print it on the screen for us. Print it. Okay, then go ahead and print the content of line. Just print it for us. Right? Okay.